Fair warning. Fair warning. Um, I'm pumping myself for another fall, but I'm going to uh, record the class, not necessarily you all, but speak loudly so that my phone still can hear because this class will be very so much reflection based, discussion based. Um, and only, I'm only, basically only assigned you all four readings throughout the entire term. So a lot of what we will, I'll have you do as far as assignments will be based upon what we discuss in class. Um, and speaking to some of my scholarly friends and like, oh, how unfair is it that they don't have an access point to basically go research or reread what you talked about if it's so discussion based. So I'm gonna just put this up on my, uh, my YouTube channel so that you all can actually go back to it the same way that you'll be able to go back to a class that you were reading um, or go back to a text that you were reading because I realize it'll be a similar format. Um, so I'm gonna introduce myself again. I'm gonna start over there uh, since we have a couple of people who came in. And um, then after that, I will want everybody to introduce themselves. You will actually go first. So uh, what I'll ask you to introduce is your first and last name, um, your major, and then something random about yourself, like how many siblings you have, a favorite color, favorite uh, interest, anything of that nature. And the fashion in which we'll move through is down, up, down, up, down. You'll be our finisher. So, my name is Miles Goodlove. I am the Honors Program Coordinator. You probably remember me from Honors Orientation, which I thought was pretty great. I was pretty excited. I'll probably have Similar energy every single time coming to class. Um, the flight is pretty great, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so my random fact is that I am the eighth sibling out of nine, the youngest son. If you can introduce yourself. Um, my name is Marissa Fu, uh, I'm a biologist. Oh, stand up. Oh. And I'll stop. Um, my name is Marissa Fu, I'm a biology major and My name is Blake Helker. I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I played soccer and volleyball in high school. My name is Ted Lewis. I'm a design and engineering major, and I had one lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what flavor? Uh, it was like the beef. Oh, nice. That's the best one. I'm Cody Sue, environmental engineering, and my passion is photography. Well, uh, my name is Leo Cody's. I'm a chemical engineering major. I have made my own black powder. Wait, you what? Made my own black powder. What is a black powder? Like gum powder. Oh! oh. Okay, wow. Oh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> 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 uh, my name is Melissa Nebedrick. I'm an accounting major, and I'm the world's biggest popcorn fanatic. Oh! Kettle or nah? Um, jalapeno, cheddar. It's oh. the best way to go. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I like that. My name is Alan Juniak. I'm a finance major, and my favorite color is purple. <sighs> nice. That's royalty. Hi, guys. I'm Mike Cristela, TV production major, and in a couple of weeks, I'm working with 50 Cent. So. That's why the hat's backwards. Yeah, to fit in with that crap. Right. Yeah, right. 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 Wow. So, 300? Um, no, my highest is like 220 or 280 or something. Right, that's, that's, that's amazing. I'm barely getting to the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Estonia. I'm a psych major and I really like poetry. Ooh, favorite poet? Um, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Stephanie Aranda. I'm an architecture major. And I have a dog named after an Italian clothing brand. Which is? Fendi. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song with Fendi. Oh, is there? I don't even know. I think so. I'll look it up. Fendi or Prada? <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Sherry and Chen. I'm an undecided engineering major. And I am very confused as to how I have so many meal sites left. Wow. It's the first week. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I've been eating a lot, but I still have like, a bunch. Are you <laughs> actually from Texas? <laughs> yeah. Are you actually from Texas? Yes, I am. Wow. A real Texan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Kate Kappas. My major is environmental engineering, and I played field hockey this last year. Nice. Uh, wait, Mo? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Garrett uh, <laughs> Hughes. I'm a film major, and I backpacked. Wow, wait, whoa, 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 you gotta go through some kind of
countries, like favorite top two countries. Top two countries, uh, Amsterdam and Bolin. And what? Bolin. Bolin. All right. Yeah, I'm with you on Amsterdam though. I'm with you. It's fun. Ah, too much. Jack O'Brien. I'm a film vi uh, video major, and my other passion is music. Besides music. Ah, music. What genre? What artist? All of them. All of them. Instrumental and vocal. Oh yeah. Okay. Nice. Oh, is that the finished list? Amazing. So if today, um, and uh, just today, wait, did everyone sign in? Yes. We're good. Amazing. <coughs> Remember this book. I'm so serious. So um, just today, if you can just say your first name before you talk, that would be great. Um, that would just help me learn names. Um, and I promise you, I will start. We had a four day weekend coming up. I'm just gonna print out pictures, names, and I'm gonna practice. <laughs> it might take me three weeks total, but I will learn everyone's name. Um, so, like I said, my name is Professor Miles, and I would like to welcome you to Honors 200. And this is gonna be an amazing experience. I absolutely believe that. I have put effort into that. And if at any point in time you feel like this is less amazing, let me know and I will see if I can adjust. I have no problem adjusting the course in order to make sure that you feel not only educated and enlightened, but slightly entertained, okay? I guarantee you the slightly entertained, I usually over excel in that, but I'm gonna say slightly because the whole point of you being here is to learn. So that's what's most important to me and that's what I'm gonna keep at the, for, uh, at the forefront of everything that we do. So. Let's just go through the syllabus. It's the first day, it's the intro, so we're gonna kind of stick to the syllabus today, and then we'll probably get into a lot more things um, next term. I mean, sorry, next term, next course. So I'm just gonna write this down. Monetary versus human capital. I'll explain that later. So, actually, no, I'll explain it now. So, the name of the class is Human Capital in Higher Education. Why did I pick that title? Any guesses? Mike, because school is expensive. Mike, and we're paying for it. School is very expensive, and you are paying for it. Would you give a clap for that? Thank you. Like, that's actually the exact reason why I named that class. Like, no jokes, no jokes at all. Um, so, when I say monetary versus human capital, monetary capital, money, 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 money. What does money look like? It looks like a bunch of numbers changing itself in your bank account. It used to be like green cash, it used to be gold, it used to have all these different things. We kept trading it kept trading it because we used to trade things and we was like, oh, it'd be easier if I just give you like this kind of IOU type of thing, right? Now today, IOUs are called credit, right? Credit cards, loans. I know you know about loans. <laughs> so those are things called credit in which we believe that you'll one day pay back, right? But I believe there's nothing more that you can invest in more than yourself, and that's human capital your knowledge, your passions, your talents, your skills, you, right? Because it's you that I believe will pay me back. It's you that we believe will be able to pay the loans. It's you that can make college the greatest experience of your life or you can make it whatever. Eh, how was college? Eh, I really don't want you to say that. I also don't want you to be like, I graduated college. I had no idea Drexel did that. I had no idea that's what it was. It cost a lot of money, right? And you could pay a lot of money to come here, which means that you are actually enrolled in a business. You want proof? I get paid to teach. I get paid to be the program coordinator. I am in my profession, my career. Everyone you see here that's not a student, likewise. Okay, so it's important that you understand how do you as a consumer of knowledge, a consumer of this school, right? Your service, teaching, advising, right? Your product, knowledge. If 
you're consuming that. You're giving us money for that, monetary capital for that, in exchange for the hopes and the opportunity, right? If we talk about pursuit of happiness, the opportunity to increase your human capital, which means that even when we give you the service and product, it's still on you. And so as an honors program coordinator, what's happened over my last three, oh my God, four, last four years, I'm going into my fourth year, that was like a realization moment, <laughs> um, is that I've had so many conversations about people who approach higher education, like it's a public K through 12 school, like it's free, like it's down the street, like it's cool. But now you're in the game, right? They talk about, oh, one day you'll be in the real world. You're, you've been in it. You've been in the real world, right? Because life began when you woke up. Life will end when you go to sleep. Hopefully it starts over again and we all can wake up and do it again. Right? And somewhere in between waking up and going to sleep, we go to school. And here we are today. So the prerequisites to being this, you have to be an honest program student. Duh. Who was an instructor? Professor Miles. Course description. Can anyone read the course description for me? You can just read. I don't, uh, you don't have to raise your hand unless like somebody's really talking at the exact same time. Then I'll just select someone. Uh, just a transition from K through 12 and down into college. I'll um, just go. Okay. So, so Liam, this course is designed to identify students' passions, talents, skills, and cumulative knowledge to help curate an ideal strategy to success within higher education as an honor student in the foremost STEM private cooperational learning university in the nation. That understood. Race. All right. <laughs> Learning outcomes. Can one person read the underlined portion of the first bullet point? The volunteers? Amazing. So what's going to happen? You're going to read the first bullet point. You're going to read the second. You're going to read the third. You're going to read the fourth. And this time I want to hear the whole sentence. Uh, carry on. The goal of this class is for every student to identify their passions, talents, skills, and knowledge. The goal of this course is for every student to understand the monetary capital preferences of the modern higher education institution. Gamut, uh, the goal of this class is for every student to identify the best contribution to self and the university of events. Jack, the goal of this class is for every student to maximize their opportunities and understand how to self-actualize the academic imagination. Woo! All right. So I'm going to go through what I mean by all four of those, right? So identify their passions, talents, skills, and knowledge. If you don't know who you are, what you want, or what you have, you don't know what you're trying to do. That's just the point of the first bullet point. Understand the monetary capital preferences of the modern higher education institutions. If you understand the business side of the school that you're in, it's my belief and my theory that you'll actually have a better understanding of how to use your own power within the school and how to also make sure that you understand that when you're speaking to someone here who works for the school, you know they're, they're, what they're dedicated to, why they're here, right? Identify their best contribution to self and the university in attendance. You get in life what you give in life. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. The more you give to the university, the more you can get from the university. You already gave money, now what else can you get to, so that you can understand more of what you can get? Maximize their opportunities and understand how to self-actualize the academic imagination. At every single point in time in your life you are learning, whether you want to or not. You're watching television and you're learning about whatever it is that you're watching television. There was this guy named Eric Thomas, he said, how is it that you know all LeBron James stats and you don't even have no stats for yourself to know about how you can give to the world? We understand what stars and celebrities and professors are giving, but what are you giving? And so I want you to understand what stats you want to build. I understand your first year students. You have some stats, and those stats got you into this school. And you're going to continue to build stats because once you got here first day and you stepped on campus, we was like, swoop. Swipe everything that you ever did before. In college, I mean, in high school, we don't care anymore. Start over, ground zero. It's not really true. You came with passions, talents, skills, and you can put those in use and effort here at the university. And it's under, and, and, and I feel like you can imagine yourself doing something here. 
but only if you're challenged to imagine yourself or you just have that natural innate type ability to do that, capability to do that. So this class is incredibly reflection based. I don't know. <laughs> and the class is incredibly reflection based because it's important that you understand um, you know, who you are at the end of the day. Some people say you can find yourself in college. I think you already found yourself. You just haven't realized how to actualize it. You think about things. You dream about things. You know, what is it like when you put those in motion? So attendance, show up every day that we have class. And so. Textbook course material. This is the only book I will require you to buy. It is an unruled composition book. Why? It has these. What are these? What are these? What are those? <laughs> <laughs> those are blank like pages. pages. Woo, what is life? Blank pages. Blank. You ever saw uh, <laughs> you ever saw a standardized test and they said this page is intentionally left blank. Your life is intentionally left blank. <laughs> okay, when you get to college, you realize we'll take a step back. All the staff members, all the administrators, all the professors, we're like, yo, here it is. We want to see what you do, <laughs> right? What will you write down? I'm kind of glad that I forgot my um, sign-in sheet. So you all are already started, right? I like that. I think I'm thinking about this. Tutoring and supplemental services, there is no tutoring for this class. It's greatly about your life. Tutor yourself. Well, I do have office hours. <laughs> Monday from 5, uh, ah, I said 5 to 6. It's 5 to 7. Sorry about that. So, uh, McAllister Hall in the Honor Student Lounge. I have an office in there. And so, Mondays, um, technically my 9 to 5, my program coordinator position is over at 5 o'clock. So, from 5 to 7, feel free to walk in. The beautiful thing is, you're all in the honors program, you can actually just walk in at any point in time, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Um, but specifically for this class, I will not book any type of like student meetings between 5 to 7 on Monday and give you all preference right then and there. Right? So you can just walk in at any point in time. Um, examinations, there is no exam, life is a test. Uh, <laughs> quiz, um, I will actually quiz you every week except for today, maybe. Because I don't have the blank pages in the composition books that you need to go buy still, which all your quizzes will be inside of there. Okay? I'll probably actually eventually start calling this a vision book. So when I say a vision book, that means the unruled composition book. Okay? Disabilities and accommodations. We have a disability services. If you have one, feel, feel free to come talk to me about that. Something that limits you, and I'll be able to figure out how to eradicate that limit. Um, it's more so like a challenge about how you can just move around it. Probably makes you think outside of the box, which is already cool and an advantage in life. Um, academic honesty, don't cheat. The class is mostly about your life. If you cheat life, well, do you. Okay. Course drop and withdrawal policies, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna email this to you, you can click on that. You can read the entire 300 page document. At the end of the day, uh, you should know, since I'm an advisor, you can drop the class um, by the end of second week, which will be removed from the honors program, you can drop it. And with, it'll be withdraw at the end of sixth week, and you'll be removed from the honors program. And you can withdraw it with my permission by the end of seventh week, and then you'll be removed from the honors program. And you have to earn a B or higher in this course to remain at a good standing within the honors program, which most people do. It has happened in the past, but you can actually just take the not this class specifically, but not as 200, just in case that happens. But it won't happen. <laughs> All right. So, got 25 minutes left. Greatness. So, now we're down to week topics. 
Uh, strong topics, but every week. <laughs> so, introduction to course and expectations. Yeah, that's what we're talking about right now. Skip. Introduction to human capital. All right, so you'll notice in parentheses it says read. So for every class, I expect you to have read something by the time you got here, it will say read. So you know. Um, every class that will be predominantly reflection based says reflection. <clears throat> every class is worth 10 points. The 10 points, oh, excuse me, is based upon participation and the quiz. Okay? So you can get the quiz completely 100% right at the end of the class. But if I feel as if you didn't adequately participate in class, I have no idea if you just want to dock a point or two. Because I just felt like you weren't here. What does that mean? You were asleep. I felt like you weren't listening. Attentive listening is giving me your eyes, giving me your ears, you know, nodding on occasion, saying, whoa, or what, or something like that, you wow. know. <laughs> wow, right? Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, those things count as participation. I just want to feel like you're with me, right? And so that's incredibly based upon my discretion, like most things with professors. It's like writing an essay, there is no real, like, actual answer. It's open ended. Did I disagree and understand what you said? Do I feel like you were with me during class? Yes or no? <coughs> um, so this, the, I'll just give you a snippet of every class. Um, introduction to human capital. Basically, we're gonna just talk about human capital um, and get down to definitions and different things that are important. And you'll have a reading that kind of break down what it means. Uh, for third week, banking concept versus problem po pose education by Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire is a very famed um, educator, and he talks about, you know, basically like good learning practices in the university. Problem solver, um, I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, but basically, if we're talking about problem pose education, what problems are you solving? Okay. Responsibility <coughs> sense of management basically is the management uh, system as far as capital is concerned for the, for the school that you are in, which tells you who gets paid when you show up to class. Right? Who gets paid when you show up to certain classes over other classes? The research university, you're in one. It's important to understand what research means um, as far as a university and what does it mean to be a consumer of the research. Endowment capital, um, every, it basically just means a savings account. Right? So what does a, a university do or have or why do they have a savings account? Um, investing in self and higher education. Oh, I don't even think that means that. Defining our tag expressions. Well, I'll define a tag is when we get there, but that's gonna be great. And then you'll see the next week is actually the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so there will be no class that day. I just need you to write me a one to two page paper based upon your tag, which is gonna happen before. Shouldn't be too hard. And that's one to two pages, uh, like single spaced, not double spaced. It's double spaced, that's like five words. <laughs> and then uh, a final essay. And the final essay, oh, I didn't put the points on there, but that's 50 points. So I'll find this by that. I'll add that and also email you all that. <laughs> Make a note of that, though. Um, and the final essay will just, uh, I'll give you a prompt, actually, a separate prompt for that later on. Um, all readings must be discussed outside of class with someone else who is in the class. Okay, so people have a better conversation about readings when you've actually had a conversation already about it, right? Practice makes perfect. So if you haven't practiced discussing a reading, then you're not gonna be as good discussing it. And that's when we've read it and I'm sitting here explaining everything and then you're not contributing because it's the first time that you actually had a conversation about what you've read. So now we're bringing up things you haven't thought about before. But if you have a conversation with at least one other person in the class, then that means that you actually have done this before and you're more prepared and ready to have a good conversation. Will that be a student in this classroom or any other other student? In this classroom. Um, recordings, I'll be recording every class so that you can go back onto YouTube and actually like watch the class and be like, okay, that's what we talked about. That's what we were able to get. Because somebody may say something that makes you say, whoa, and you want to use that as a quote. 
um, that you want to write in your vision book later on as a note proceeding forward. Every class that we have kind of piggybacks off the class before, and it's hard for me to talk about this week without talking and knowing last week. Um, and this is just the process in which I was introducing to the information that I think will be very great for you all. Um, in participation, I kind of explained that I participate in every class and I told you what that kind of means. Greatness. A little less than 20 minutes left. All right. Okay. Now we can get up. Oh, sorry. sorry, quick question. Yes. Um, Katie, <laughs> okay. um, for the quizzes, like, are they just based on the reading or like how are those? They're based on the class discussion of um, the readings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, will the final essay be done in class? No. Okay. Right. So, what's going to happen on the final class? is you write your final essays, you come in, you've written them, and they're good to go. You come, turn them in, and then we have a whole like conversation about the class, what we've learned, what we did not learn, what we'd like to go from here, um, and what you learned in the process of writing your paper, so that I have a good understanding of like what was valuable for you, so I know how to move forward with this. Um, yes? Um, this is like sound like Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, when it says notes inside of the uh, unworn composition book must fill at least one page worth of notes, is that your notes on the meeting? Or um, so that would be one. Sorry, I want to say that's. So that would be one full page worth of notes for the class, and then one page worth of notes for the reading. Okay. Yeah. So the way I envision that is you have one full page worth of notes in the vision book on the readings. You go have your conversation with someone else, so you actually have points to reference while you're in that conversation. You come to class and you hear now, not just one person or two people that you discussed it with, but now you have a chance to write a whole page worth of notes from 16, 15 people worth of notes and understandings. Or well, 16 including myself. Okay. All right, good to go. So, as um, a further introduction, I have just a little bit more and then we'll probably actually get out of here early, which would be great. Um, is I want to talk about corporations. Okay. So, with the corporation, the word I want to focus on, the thing here, is corp. Now, corp comes from the Latin term corpus. What does corpus mean? Body. What's your name? Oleum. Liam. But what's your name? <laughs> Oleum. And then what does corpus mean? Body. Body. Okay. So corpus means body. Now, this is the body. Uh, we have corporation, we have corpus, we have body. What are you born with? Ah. Uh, Sorry, you can say it? Liam, a body. <laughs> you don't have to say your first name when you're doing this right now. <laughs> Wait, body, right? All right, say body. 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 Corpus is body. Corpus is body. Corpus is body. Corpus is body. I am born with a body. body. Yeah. All right, so you're born with a body. Now, what else do corporations have? Very true. Money, people. So they get their body through a collection of people. All right, little text. You understand that's people? Good? All right. All right, amazing. So corporations comes from the Latin term corpus. If you break down the court part, which means body and that body in the terms of reference to a corporation it means collection of people. You attend Drexel University Incorporated. Keep that in mind, right? It is an incorporated school. It has to be incorporated in order to be an established nonprofit or a profit. 
as we proceed. Corporations, well, what's the name of this one? Drexel University. University. Right, so Drexel University is the people. Of corporation. Collection of people. Collection of people, and the collection of people are called bodies. Faculty and staff. It's called Drexel University. Drexel University. So the name of our collection of people is Drexel University. So every corporation has a name. So when you were born, what's one of the first gifts you got? A birth certificate. A name <laughs> that was written on a birth certificate. Yes. <laughs> So you were given a name. Okay. So you were born with a body. You were given a name. When the collection of people come together for a corporation, one of the first things they do is establish a name for that corporation. Now, as a United States citizen, you are given some type of identification that's not your name. Social Security number. Woo! <laughs> now I'm going to put that here, right? Because the name stays the same here. All right. So this is going to be the corporation. Imagine this to be the human or citizen. And we're kind of like filing in right there. Right? And then this is just the corporation itself. So I'm going to erase this so there's no confusion. It's kind of like in my way. Greatness. So for a corporation, what's their social security number called? Someone's tax ID. Similar. Similar. That tax ID number is also known as an EIN, an employee identification number. Right? They can't hire somebody without the employee identification number. So when they hire their employees, we give our social security number. So that our social security number is tied to the employee identification number. But even you, the consumers of knowledge, give your social security number in order to be recognized under this uh, employee identification number at this corporation, our university. So understand that when we're talking about human capital, that corporations are almost trying to mimic humans. Like, there's actually many debates about whether a corporation is a human. Where, where does their free speech go? What, how far does the Bill of Rights really apply in actuality to a corporation? Where do we separate the corporation from the people? Because people run a corporation. And the corporation wouldn't exist if the people didn't exist. And it's important to understand that when we're talking about the business and human capital, the human capital is a resource, right? So, what is economics? Yes. Is it the, oh, Liam, is it the study of trade? The study of trade, yes. Very, I like that. I like that, but what are you trading? Uh, goods and services. Goods and services. For monetary compensation? In, in modern day times, yes. Post barter system. So I would say we have trades, we have goods, my last name is Good Love, <laughs> services. And goods and services, I like to call resources. So, what is our corporation's greatest resource? No. Which is stored. Textbooks. <laughs> Textbooks have information, people, without information being used. Knowledge is not created. It's people. 
I think that the greatest resource that is alive is people. Which I categorize, uh, I categorize as human capital. In our economic system, capitalism, right? We want to gain capital. In order to gain capital, we have to enter economics and begin trades, which means we're exchanging goods and services because they serve as a resource for people. But people can develop the goods and the services and even the opportunity for trade. So therefore, people are always involved. Business is not numbers. Business is people to people. The numbers represent a value for the resources, not only the value for the goods, the, the services, or even the value of opportunity for trade, the value of the people. We call that salary or a wage. Human capital. Now, knowledge. If you have this, you might want to take a picture of this. Written it down. Cool. We will be meeting up with people to read anyways. So somebody has it. This will be my last breakdown. His, um... Information does not equal knowledge. Give me some info. Just random facts. I should be random facts. You're wearing a red shirt. I'm wearing a red shirt. Info. More info. The sky is blue. The sky is blue. More info. The Pope's coming to town. The Pope's coming to town! <laughs> right? So I'm gonna write that down. We got Buff Pope. <laughs> we got a red shirt. Sky's blue. Today, in Philly, sometimes it's gray. <laughs> what does this information tell you? Tells you nothing besides facts. Galen, correct? Garrett. G A R R E T T. G. Garrett. Garrett. There you go. Got you. Had it in my head. <laughs> Garrett. Okay. That is correct. This is all info. So, what I'm saying is that at this school, in your textbook, everywhere, there's just info. Right? There are 15, 16 people in this room right now. Who cares? Right? I think a lot of us spend our time in gaining info. You don't gain knowledge. What do you know? What do you know? Pope. You know red shirt. You know sky blue. How do you know? The observation of looking at the sky. Tell us that it's blue. Brilliant. I mean, I, I can open a window and look up and there's a blue sky. So that's, uh, I don't like that example, I'm sorry. Give me, what do you know? No, no offense. Okay. What do you know? The that sky is, city's is gonna be prove to me, what, prove to me what you know, prove it. I could show you I an can. article about the boat coming down. I am an amateur tap dancer. I'm gonna go with the article <laughs> <laughs> or the Pope coming to town. So that's how, that's still information. Right? Somebody just wrote it down, put it on the internet. Said, Paul, this is what I know. So how do we go from info to know? We're getting closer. Things that we've experienced. I like that. We're getting we're really close. Ooh, we're like, go ahead. 
Then I'd like to use knowledge and information. But that's what I'm trying to do right now, for sure. I can do something to prove this. Prove. You can do something to prove it. But do is actually the biggest word. Do. Have you ever heard of the term know-how? Or the phrase, I should say? Know-how? How? The difference between information and knowledge is how. And what you do. So when you have information and you put it to use, it turns into knowledge. Because now you can talk about your experience of that information in action. And you analyzed it. So you put it into action, you did something, you gained an experience, you analyzed it, therefore you're able to deduce whether the red shirt was actually an impact on the class or how the sky is turning blue, right? Or was that affected the Pope coming? The Pope coming doesn't affect me. What does the Pope say? Now how did I apply that to my life? When the Pope showed up and all the other people showed up, what was the effect, the experience? Basically what I'm trying to say, between the difference between information and knowledge is how you use information. And when you can go back to that information and say that I had an experience and an understanding of what that information looks like in application, I have knowledge. So I can only give you information. I can never give you knowledge unless you put it to use. So everything about my class today, tomorrow, next week and the week after, and the week after, the next 10 weeks, 11 weeks including today, is about giving you information that I believe that you can put into an experience and do something with so that you can gain knowledge. And the point of the vision book is that you can write down your experiences of gaining information to knowledge. Thank you, class dismissed. <laughs> Thank you for the class. That was inspirational. You know? it was like, I'm glad you know, it, that that was. You did a very good job of presenting, um, just presenting your presentation. I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I enjoyed that. I thoroughly was <laughs> I'm glad. I guess so. Okay, you, yeah. you were like jumping things out there. You know. Uh, like now, I appreciate that, Liam. Okay. I was trying. I wanted to inspire. Like, I, I designed the class. To be inspirational, to hopefully motivate people to get moving, you know, motivate, move, you know, on their on their class and their experience. You know, only had 50 minutes, so I'm trying to do the best I can.